Hello guys and welcome to another uh, edition in our PIC microcontrollers and really just microcontrollers uh, implementation, electronic stuff. Um, good to be back in our normal uh, kind of format here. Um, I'm go I've got our wonderful uh, LED cube stuff to go. Um, I had a recent viewer uh, contact me and ask me where, when I was going to be posting the, uh, the hardware and software stuff. So well, actually right now. <laughs> so anyway, here is our hardware and I will be posting the software shortly afterwards. Um, I was so excited about this I actually went ahead and built it. So actually you guys may get all three videos just bang 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 uh, this weekend. You may get uh, um, posting the hardware one now and then software should sh follow shortly as well as the demo should follow after that. Um, Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, how we're g how this uh, is laid out is this is formatted for um, how I'm actually going. I'm probably going to actually build boards on this, and I don't know if um, you guys could comment. Let me know how wh what you feel about if you would like to actually purchase boards. Um, for your own endeavors, um, the board that I designed, um, I can uh, give you guys. You know, uh, I can figure out a way to do that and make that happen. Where um, I can post a link to a place where you guys can actually order the boards for fairly, uh, fairly decent price and um, help support my channel by doing that. Um, if you guys would like that, um, if if not, if you guys would rather just build it yourself, that's totally cool with me. So uh, this uh, schematic and uh, the software uh, that I'm going to be showing you and whatnot will all be in that project codes link uh, for your guys's. Uh, ease you guys can go there and grab that stuff and then you'll have the schematic and everything so if you want to uh, make it yourself or something you can by all means go ahead and do that um, we're going to go ahead and get into this how we're going to be doing this um, the reason that you don't see any leds on the schematic is because like i said again i'm going to i'm i made this schematic for uh laying out a board well the board will just have a bunch of uh, through holes in it for the uh, for the leads to go down through because since this is in kind of a lattice work I guess you would say all the LEDs how that they're shaped it's not like you just have individual LEDs on the board right you've got this kind of lattice where you got this like four before grid of you know holes and everything how these all go in and uh, I'll show you I, I think I'll actually have boards made for this but I'm gonna go through like a uh, like I, I think batch PCB was one that I showed on here and a PCB pool and places like that I may go through one of those guys that do the panelizing uh, thing where it's cheaper so it may be a few maybe a month or two before I actually see boards so um, we'll probably come back to this in a month or two and I'll show you guys the the finished boards and uh, them being them assembled and everything or I may tackle trying to uh, scribe it myself but I don't know I haven't had a whole lot of luck with dual sided boards dual air boards getting everything to line up properly and whatnot um, if I think I can get, keep it all on one layer which I don't know it's pretty complicated as you can see it, it's, it gets kind of to be a lot um, I may not be able to keep it to one layer and if I can't then I'll, I'll have somebody else make it um, otherwise if I can then I, I may uh, take the challenge and I may try to uh, scribe it myself and if it comes out good then I'll just use that but um, let me go you guys' thoughts about having uh, uh, gone ahead and laid out ready to go PCB that you just uh, want to just maybe purchase for I don't know I, I, I honestly can't tell you the price uh, as of yet I just you know if you guys would tell me that you'd be interested in something like that then I can maybe put together a price for you guys and uh, I'll try to keep it as, as, as simple and as uh, inexpensive as possible but um, if you guys like that idea, post some comments. Let me know if I get enough comments on it. I may do that, and I'll post a link or make a video that tells you guys that those are available. Anyway, um, getting sidetracked here. Sorry about that. What we got is I've got an 886, because it was just what I had laying around, and an 886 has a lot more memory than, let's say, a 676 or something like that. So I just chose an 886. But uh, by all means, you can choose something smaller. Um, I just chose this one because, that's I, like I said, that's what I had laying around. So um, and that had and had lots of memory and whatnot and I haven't uh, Chris I haven't looked at the uh, the the other ones all the data sheets on the other ones that you sent me there might be one that 616 may have more memory and might be able to be uh, able to implement this with or not I was thinking of doing some other advanced stuff too with it I was thinking about um, doing uh, uh, whatever it was, maybe putting some serial in this. Uh, later I don't show a serial port, but I may hang a serial port off of this thing at some point in time. And uh, then we may build uh, 
again another one like that one video I showed where you're using Visual Studio and using uh, um, Visual Basic or C++ C Sharp or something like that um, you build a program that you can actually kind of have like a graphical like a GUI way of, of forming your your images that you want your your uh, LED cube to work with and then uh, sending that via serial over to your to your microcontroller so I may do something like that and anyway that may be a future future thing that we may put in um, so far as the board goes I'll probably put every bell and whistle I can think of but this is basically the basic rundown um, you can do this in a breadboard um, because I, I have done it <laughs> and you guys will be seeing that video uh, but uh, Anyway, to get started, we've got a pick microcontroller. I noticed that I missed something. Anybody catch that I missed this? I missed my mem clear pull up <coughs> because I actually really need this. I actually really do need the mem clear pull up because I'm going to be using my uh, ICD3, which is a very good uh, programming debugging tool because I'm going to be tweaking the program a lot and, and pulling it out of the breadboard and reprogramming it and snapping it back in uh, multiple, multiple times throughout the, the code development processes will get old. So I'm going to use a uh, in-circuit programmer uh, that's the ICD3, which I've found to be a very good one. I, I, I may do a review on that at some point, but uh, it's, it seems to be a really good tool. I like it a lot. Anyway, um, so I would I imagine that there's a 10k pulled to 5 volts here on the Memclair line, like I normally have it on my videos. Um, anyway, I've got some switches. I got three switches here. What that's for is uh, just to give some some user input to the system. Once it's all together, you'd have a forward, reverse, and then random mode. Basically, what I was thinking was you push forward and you can step through different sequences going forward, and then if you pass one up that you like, you can push the reverse one, go back to it, and or you can just set random and then when you push random it'll just every you know so many seconds it'll change uh, uh, sequences you know so you may have you know the one that that, that looks like that uh, that 3d graph looking thing that goes up and down um, like a paraboloid or something like that or whatever the, the people make um, and then it switches to like looks like rain or then switches to maybe uh, like a worm chasing itself and then switches to whatever you know so that just gives you kind of some control of it um, from the user portion as well as then I basically uh, put all everything in shift registers so I'm using the same old uh, 595 chips um, you can look at the the video on shift registers that I made for the 595 uh, chip which is the um, serial to parallel uh, shift register and that's so um, it's kind of like an IO expander um, so that way I can get uh, 16 pins uh, for only three pins I can take three pins out of my micro and get 16. So if you haven't seen that movie, check that video out. That video is a good video. I go through in depth about how all these work and everything. And then basically what I'm doing is I'm doing the 470 ohms out here. And th this is going to be where the cathode of the LED goes. And I'll explain a little more about this later, the, the concept of this and the idea of what this is. But this is going to be where the cathode is. These will be my sink, will be my current sink. Um, due to the fact that you know all those 16 pins, if you watch the last video and I show you, I'm touching each one of those pins to light the LED. Um, when I'm touching those pins, I'm actually touching ground to each cathode, and on the side, those kind of like angled pins that go up at an angle that are all the uh, anodes. <coughs> those are the those are where you're going to put your positive, you know. And if you notice in that video, I put the positive, the red wire, the positive side of my supply on that, and then I touch ground around. So that's essentially what we're doing. And for the positive side, I've got down here some P channels. <coughs> okay. So this is where the anode will go. And there's four anodes because there's four layers. Remember, um, in each layer, all the anodes are tied together. So you've got one anode for, or one hole for each layer, so one anode. And that's going to be a P-channel. <coughs> I'm just using a, uh, actually, I don't know what I, I used. Just a, any P-channel is, is pretty good, like this NDS0605 or something like that. <coughs> just anything. And you got to remember your currents here. Think about you could at some point maybe make each layer 100% on. So you want to make sure that you can you can carry the current. So make sure this guy is is beefy. You got 470 ohms here. So if we do a quick um, calc here, uh, let me get my calculator. Uh, okay, if we do a quick calc here, and we have 5 volts by 470 ohms. That's about 10.6 milliamps each. Something like that. 
So if you've got 10.6 milliamps per deal, you got 16 of them, you got 169 milliamps. So you got to make sure this guy's rated like 200 milliamps or, or something like that, you know. Make sure he's he's beefy um, so that so that he uh, he you know, he can sink all that he can push all yeah, you can push all that through this guy. Um, so far as your your shift registers, you want to make sure they can take it which they can perfectly fine. I can't remember how much they can sink here. They can sink like 50 or something milliamps per pin or something like that. I can't remember. It, it's it's a lot. You have to look at the data sheet. But these are basically just fine. Um, but make sure your MOSFET can take whatever you're pushing at it. Don't put like a little uh, 100 milliamp MOSFET in there because it may get either it may may not actually burn it, but it may get really really hot and eventually fail. So you might want to get uh you know like I said like like you might want to get a 200 or 250 milliamp one. I think that's what these are. These are like 200 or 300 or something like that. And then you got a 10k pull up. And the reason you have a 10k pull up um, gate to source is most of the time you know you see with the end channels you'll have the the like one mega ohm or something like that uh, pull down that goes from gate to source. We'll see with uh, <coughs> with p channels it's completely the reverse. You've got from gate to source has to be at least minus I think it's like minus five volts or something like that has to be from gate to source to turn it on. So that means if so they're inverted too, right? You know, you gotta think think backwards when doing this. So essentially you've got a 10k pull up on the gate of this transistor. And what you're doing is if you give a one here, you give put five volts on this gate. You've got five volts. You've got you know VGS gate minus source. You've got gate is five volts minus the source is five volts, and you get zero. And at zero, this guy this guy doesn't turn on. You get zero volts gate to source, and so he he uh, he. Oh, I take it back. He does turn on because it takes negative voltage to turn this guy to make this guy uh, to make this guy conduct it. I think I just said that backwards. So yeah. So essentially, I want uh, you'll you'll give it. A one, when you want it, a uh, you'll give it you give it the the one here, the five volts here, to uh, turn it off because you'll get zero, and a zero this guy will turn off, so you get zero. But then if you want him to turn on and begin conducting, then you'll give it a zero because then zero minus five is negative five volts, which this guy will start conducting. So keep that in mind. Everything's reversed. See, I even kind of got mixed up there. You get you gotta keep that in mind. Your your logic is gonna be is gonna be a little wacky with all this. So keep in mind what you're doing. So anyway, this is your five volt supply for each one of your la layers. So this will be your layers. You got you know the first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. Then within those layers, you'll have then all the all the cathodes. And this is where you pick which LED you want. So you're gonna basically, if you want layer one LED one, you're gonna turn on the layer one FET. You know, which I guess I'm calling it over here. I'm calling it row one. The layer one FET. And then you'll turn on uh, the first LED, which depending on how you hook it up, could be this one or that one or that one or this. Or let's see how we're doing this here. Be this one. And if you notice, there's two of these cascaded together by pin nine coming around here, going to the serial input. What that does is that allows, as you're shifting stuff from A to B to C to D to E to F to G to H, once you get to H, it'll actually shift H out. That's why it's called QH star is it'll shift H out down through here and become the input of this, which effectively shifts this, whatever's here, on the next clock cycle, it's gonna shift it to the A of this one. And so it, it just continues on, see? As you keep going, it continues on, so that way you, it, looks like, it looks like a 16 uh, pin you know, chip instead of, uh, instead of two eights. It looks, it looks like just one giant, one giant chip when you do this. So that's kind of the cascading feature. You're just passing it on to the next one and so that way it just keeps on going okay and so that's that's what we're doing here with this and so you essentially have this is this can be your first one or this can be your first LED which however you want to do it so you're going to turn row one on and let's say LED one on okay so you're going to put five volts on all the anodes of everything in that in that grid and only the cathode of one of them will you ground, which will allow it to, which will allow it to conduct. The rest of them you'll have at five volts. Okay. 
so that way that way if you have everything else at 5 volts then only only that one is grounded only current can flow through the one so that's how it works and for those of you that, that don't remember how they're labeled here's here's a good picture I found of an LED um, of your anode and cathode the cathode is always marked usually and it's usually marked by the flat spot at least on these five millimeter and three millimeter these big through hole LEDs it's usually always marked um, where the cathode is and then of course you know there's the symbol there's the anode and the cathode and the anode is always the long one the cathode is always the short one so if you remember when we were bending those and everything you remember which one which one was which basically the ones that stuck out the side that went down at an angle those were the anodes the ones that are facing down, where there's 16 of them, there's, those are the cathodes. So that's essentially what you're looking at. You're basically controlling the anodes here and controlling the cathodes here. And then we came over, because we got to power this thing somehow, come over and we got a little input power supply. What I did was I went ahead and if I'm going to make a board out of this, I'm going to go ahead and, and put some protection circuitry in there. Um, so I put uh, some over voltage protection. That's what this is right here. Um, I've got a, I think it's a 40 volt, because this thing can take, I think, 40 volts. Uh, this LM7805 regulator can take 40 volts. So I put a little 41 or 42 volt uh, Zener diode with a uh, one watt 10 ohm resistor ahead of it. And what that'll do is that um, if you for some reason have some wall power supply or some goofy power supply that, that messes up and goes to like 50 volt or something like that or does something crazy, um, this guy will conduct and yank that voltage down. But um, he can only take so much current. So what we're doing is we're limiting the current with this little with this resistor right here, and we're letting this resistor get real hot and take kind of the whammy. We're just letting this diode. Uh, work against something is what we're doing and then of course our decoupling caps and all that fun stuff so and then here's just the power system power supply for um, these two chips um, that's their deals and they have some decoupler caps on them as well as our decoupling cap on our uh, on our pick microcontroller um, so that's pretty much uh, pretty much it that's how we're doing it hopefully that made sense um, if if not stay tuned for the demo video and it'll probably make more sense um, in the demo video I'll kind of reiterate this kind of this kind of scheme that we're doing so basically you're picking which cathode you want to choose the individual LED with this circuitry up here and then this circuitry down here chooses which level you're on whether you're on the bottom level or the bottom level or the top level um, and so once you're once you choose which level you're on, then you pick which LED you want to to do its thing. So okay, guys. Um, sorry, to made that this video might have ran a little long, but that's okay. Um, that should be that should be pretty much it for the hardware. Hardware is fairly simple. Um, you just got to see these are hooked up here. These row f three or four or whatever they they're hooked up like this. Um, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. All you need is uh, the serial line. Uh, serial clock and latch clock going back to here again if you don't understand how these work or whatever just check out my uh, my video on shift registers and you'll see uh, how to do that download the the code off the off the uh, page and check all that out and it'll show you how that's done <coughs> so anyway that's pretty much it that's all we're done so stay tuned for part two which will be the software and then later on the actual hardware uh, demo thanks a lot guys